Uh, Job chapter 19, uh, verses 26 uh, through 28. If you have it, please signify by saying amen. amen. Here is the word of the Lord. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom shall I see for myself? And mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me. But ye say, why persecute we him? Seeing the root of the matter is found in me. Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> Black excellence is a month that gives us an opportunity to, to get into areas that we don't normally talk about much throughout the year. <coughs> Learning and knowing the history and the heritage of our people uh, should be a time of both enlightenment and enjoyment. It's good to know that uh, where we came from, uh, but it's also good to learn the lessons uh, from the mistakes that we made along the way. And if you don't know uh, any better, one would think that black history and black people have always been relegated to second-class citizenship <clears throat> or even pushed over uh, into the realms of slavery or Jim Crow. Uh -huh. But almost everything that is known about the ancient world and everything that was learned from the ancient world came from the continent of Africa. The Egyptians taught the Greeks, the Greeks taught the Romans, the Egyptians also taught the Asians, and the Africans are the ones who educated South and Central America. And since this is my last Sunday <clears throat> talking about black history, because we will have a guest youth speaker next Sunday, it's my last Sunday. I, I will do my best to try to wrap this up <clears throat> and uh, talk about what I think is pertinent and important at this time. Now, on first Sunday, we talked from the subject, When They See Us. Right. <clears throat> and we dealt with all of the uh, perceived nario, uh, negative stereotypes that are often associated when they see us. I don't want to go through that list again because it's a very uh, discouraging uh, and in some ways humiliating list. But we went on to say that, that what they see in us or when they see us, what they really see is someone that they admire, someone that they want to be with, someone that they want to be like. And there is an embedded fear in them when they see us because they know more about us than we often know about ourselves. When they see us, they see champions. When they see us, they see strength. They see overcomers. They see people who have persevered, having endured the worst experiences possible. Oh, yeah. We talked about that on the first Sunday. On the second Sunday, we went on to talk about, <coughs> last Sunday, we talked about when we see us. And we introduced to the congregation a Zulu word um, that really has meaning deeper than the greeting. We talked about Sawubwana. S-A-W-U-B-O-N-A. Sawubwana is not only hello, but it is I see you, and I see your heritage, and I see your power, I see your person, and I see your potential. 
And so sawabwana means that we need to stop looking beyond each other. Stop looking through each other. Stop looking past each other and really take the time to see one another. Sawabwana, the proper response to when you are greeted with Sawabwana is Yebo Sawabwana, which is, I see you seeing me. And all this week, people have been Sawabwanoing me through text messages. <laughs> and I have been Sawabwayo Sawabwana to you too. Uh, the whole point is, I see you. And I seek to understand you. And if anyone can relate to you, it's someone who sees you. So let's try it again. Look at somebody and tell them Sawabwana. And your response should be Yebo Sawabwana. Let's continue that, amen? Sawabwana. Yebo Sawabwana. But today, <laughs> we've talked about when they see us, we've dealt with what comes with that, and we went on to talk about when we see us. But today, I want to shift gears and talk about when we see God. And perhaps, perhaps there is nothing as important to the Christian faith than the blessing or the blessed promise of one day seeing God. Yeah. Nothing fills our expectation like the idea of some glad morning yeah. when this life is over I will see God. <clears throat> and we are told in scripture that there will come a day when every one of us, both individually and also collectively, will see God. The wicked will see God. And they will not be too thrilled when they see him. In fact, it is often called in scripture, the great and terrible day of the Lord. The book of Revelation teaches that every one of us will see God, but not everyone will be happy, thank you, to see God. Amen. Folks who are in hell now will have their chance to defend their life with the claims of innocence at the great white throne of judgment. Hear now the word of the Lord from Revelation 20 and 11. John writes, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whom the face of the earth and heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. He says, I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. He goes on to say, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And then he puts icing on the cake by saying, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. My brothers and sisters, I don't know what the Jehovah Witness have been reading, but the last time I put words together, lake of fire means it's a fire in a lake somewhere. 
If hell ain't on fire, I believe this lake is on fire. And if hell ain't on fire and it's thrown off in the fire, it's still on fire. Let me move on today. So you see, some people will not want to see God. In fact, in chapter 6, in the same book of Revelation, John writes this. Listen to what the scripture says in verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island will move out of their place. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid himself in dens and in rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? I wish I had a Bible read in here. Who shall be able to stand? Literally, there will be no hiding place. Whatever excuse you thought you had, I hate to bring to be the bearer of bad news. It ain't good enough. Because there is no hiding place. And he leaves no one out. He says those with rich and those with nothing, those who are mighty and those who are weak, those who are known, those who are unknown, will be trying to find a place to hide when it comes down to seeing God. But for the believer, seeing God and Christ is what we are looking forward to. We want to see Jesus. In fact, we want to see Jesus so much until we have altered our lives to ensure that we see him in peace. We want to see the Lord. Just like the Greeks that came and asked Philip to show us Jesus, take us to Jesus. We, we've come to see Jesus. We want to meet him. But Jesus at that time said, I'm headed to the cross. And if a grain of corn would fall in the ground, it will multiply, but if it abide alone, it shall not. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I want to see Jesus. I want to see the Lord. I want to see the man who died for me, who rose for me, and now lives for me. It is evident in everything that we say. Those who believe, it is evident in everything that we do. But it stands out glaringly in our song selection. When we hear things and sing things like, I'm living to live again. We sing songs like this. One of these mornings won't be very long. You're going to look for me. I'll be going on home. I'm going up to heaven where I will sing and shout. There will be nobody there that will be able to put me out. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer for if I suffer, I will gain eternal life and then the songwriter says when I see Jesus amen when I see the man who died for me the man who set me free amen all of my troubles will all be over when I see Jesus amen it is deeply rooted and the Negro slave and Jim Crow experience. <clears throat> but Mahalia Jackson put it out like this. I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. I'm going to feast on milk and honey one of these days. 
I'm going to tell God how you treated me one of these days. Yes, when I see Jesus. When I see God. And yet perhaps there is not quite a moving tribute to the Christian experience than the idea of having everything that we wanted in this world and not received or achieved to be freely given in the next. Hence the songs spoke of a golden slipper, long white robes, plenty to eat, and nothing to do but walk around heaven all day. And the song would say, I'm going to rest from my journey. I'm going to rest from my labor. I'm going to rest from all of my heartache and pain. And of course, I will wear a crown. Who has not heard these songs? I shall wear a crown. When it's all over, I shall see his face. When it's all over, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story of how I made it over as soon as I get home. For the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. This, this, this is the concept in our mind. It is embedded in our scripture. Of how it will be when we see the Lord. This is the day that we believe that all that was wrong will be made right. As King would say, the crooked will be made straight. The rough will be made smooth. All that was sinful will be removed. All that is awful will be erased. And everything that we have gone through will be worth it all when we see the Lord. Beloved, these are the blessings that we long to receive. And these many blessings are true. Much of what we believe is even also biblically sound. Even though all of our songs don't match up with the scripture, the idea is we won't have to put up with this mess down here anymore. But I don't want us just to think about seeing God in the distant future. I don't want us to just think about seeing God way down the line. Here in this Black Excellence Month, I want us to focus on having a better vision of God. To see God. I want to tell us how we're going to do this. Number one, we have better vision when we first of all See God within ourselves. We don't have to wait to die to see God. We need to see God within ourselves. The Bible teaches that God made man in his image and in his likeness. This known fact served as the premise upon which when we look at ourselves, we see the image of God. And some people have a problem with this basic truth. But listen, we're not looking at ourselves as God, but as creatures who are made in his image. We are the crowning jewel of creation. When God made us, he made something that is irreplaceable, relentless, and quantifiably good. In fact, God does not just make us he fashions us. He forms us and he created us. And then he blew into man the breath of life. The Ruach, the real spirit of God. Therefore, every time we look at ourselves, we are able to see God in us. And we should be able to see God at work in us. Here, Philippians chapter 1 says, He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
Then in chapter 2 of Philippians, he said, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. And we are able to see God at work in ourselves. But not only are we able to see God at work in ourselves, we should see God working through us and on us at the same time. Don't ever let yourself see yourself as a failure. Don't ever look at yourself and see a nobody. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a defeated person. In fact, you are even more than your accomplishments. You're more than your mistakes. You're more than the sins you have committed. There is something in you that the enemy can never take away from you. And that is the image of God. You have the life of God inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. You have the favor of prosperity working in your soul. And you have the blessing of Abraham in your spirit. You have the glory of God in your heart. And you have the power of Christ at your destiny. You are somebody. Your history was nothing but ministry to get you ready for your destiny. You see, God is inside of you. And when you know who you are, you don't define yourself by what other people see when they see you. You may not understand what you're looking at, but you're looking at a miracle. You may not understand who you are yet, but I'm going to help you before this day is over. You are blood washed, sanctified, overcoming, truly born again child. And God is not through with any of you yet. Look at somebody say, he ain't through with me yet. And I don't have to wait till I see God to see this. When I look at myself, I see this. I have a better vision. Let me finish this. Secondly, we not only should see God in ourselves, but we should be able to see God in others. The reality is God is working through someone else just like he's working through me. God is at work in other people too. He's using other people just like me. And we need to be delivered from the idea that God can't use nobody but me. We got to get delivered from the idea that ain't nobody right but me. It's more folk right than you. It's more folk living holier than you. It's people who fast and pray more than you. It's people who go to church more than you. It's people who read the Bible more than you. And yes, there are people who worship more than you. So never get the idea that I'm the only one that's living right. God can use anybody. Let's understand that when we see God in other people, good things begin to happen. We stop talking about each other. We stop mistreating each other. We start respecting one another. We start forgiving one another. We start literally praying for each other. And we lift each other up. We should never be glad when somebody's going through. We ought to be able to see God in that person. And come alongside and pick them up. Believe it or not, there's somebody that see God in you. I know you made mistakes. I know you've messed up. But get up from there. Because somebody sees God in you. Never underestimate what other people see when they see you god is at work in you and you know if it had not been for the lord on my side i would not have made it. god is in homeless people god is at work in poor people god is at work in anyone that said yes to his will and unless we become as little children and humble ourselves Jesus said we will not enter into the kingdom of God unless we humble ourselves and stop being all such and much and think we're bigger and better than somebody. God is at work in someone else. Can you look past their fault and see their need? Can you forgive someone who has hurt you, someone who has wronged you? Can you be mature enough 
to say like Michelle Obama, when they go low, we will go high. Can you have enough God in you that said, I'm not going to let your attitude dictate my spirit. I'm not going to let you feeling bad make me feel bad. I got enough Holy Ghost in me to lift you up. God is in us. And if God is in us, that means God is for us. And if God is for us, he's more than the world against us. I got to close this message. God is in us. And I don't have to wait to die to see God. In fact, I get excited when Sunday morning and Wednesday night roll around because I get a chance to see God in somebody else. I'm looking to see God in you. When they mistreat you, I'm looking to see God in you. When folk don't understand you, I'm looking to see God in you. I'm praying that God will show himself strong in someone else. And listen, not only can we see God in ourselves, not only can we see God in other, other people, but we ought to pray, Lord, use me. Lord, put me in a position to give you the glory. Lord, use me. And when he does that, we need to keep on pressing on. And say, so, Lord, use me again. I don't want to just be used one time. I want you to use me again. And we need to stop making excuses that God can't use us when, yes, God is. Looking for somebody that he can use. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say, Lord, here am I. Send me, I'll go. I got to close this morning message. But the healing takes place when I can see God in me. And when I can see God in others. But finally, <coughs> when the healing takes place, when I can see God in my situation. Listen, black people, this is Black Excellence Month. Whether good or bad, whether happy or sad, we ought to be able to see God in every situation. Listen, church, Romans 8 and 28 put it like this. And we know that all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord, that are called according to his purpose. Everything that happened to me has been for my good. Even the hardship and pain, it has been for my good. The tears, the pain, the anger has been for my good. The ups and the downs, the hurts and the stress have been for my good. The wounds and the scars, the pitfalls and the mud have been for my good. The mistreatments, the neglect, the fake friends and real enemies have been for my good. The times I thought I could not make it have been for my good. When I didn't have a dollar in the bank, or a dime in my pocket it has been for my good because I have learned to see God in everything it has not been easy it has not been easy it hasn't been a smooth road I lost friends along the way I lost money along the way I lost prayer partners along the way I even lost family members along the way church folk walked out on me the folk I helped the most turn around and stab me in the back but I have learned how to see God look at somebody say God is in that situation the one I did the most for turn around and did the worst against me I had to learn how to encourage myself and say get up Ava you can still make it. I wonder this evening, can anybody see God in your situation? It may not feel good. It may not look good. You may want to quit right now. But I got to tell you before I go that the best is yet to come. That before he can bring you out, he had to bring you down. And when I 
get through with this. I'm coming out. I feel like shouting. Because I heard Joe say, though he slay me, yet, high five somebody, tell him yet, I'm going to praise him, yet, I'm going to give him the glory in my situation. When it get dark in my room, I got a light that keep on shining. And this little light of mine, it may not be like yours, but I am going to let it shine. I got to close church because I heard Job say, when it's all said and done, I see God in myself. I see God in other people. But most of all, I see God in my situation. But that ain't all. When I leave here, I got to close church. Because one of these days, ain't the Lord all right. Somebody gonna call Dean to pick me up. I can't walk down there. I can't drive down there. But Dean Memorial will pick me up and take me in the back, embalm my body, bring my family in, set them at the round table, bring out insurance policy, pick out a casket, and put me in it. Oh, y'all ain't ready to have church. It's coming a day, church, when I don't have to resign. I'm going to leave this world. And this body of believers will look for a new pastor and say, we need somebody to take us on further. Harvard done done it what he could. When they stretch me out in the church across the street, designed by Akia Don Evan, I'm going to be stretched out there. And when they get there, I don't want a long funeral. I just want them to march in and march right back out and carry me up Pilgrim Rest Drive. Ain't the Lord all right? They have saved a spot just for me. Four foot by six foot to put me in it. But I heard old man Joe say, when Leslie get through crying and Amari and AJ have shed their tears, though the skin worm eat up my body. Oh, y'all ain't ready to have church. I got to get out of here. Will you never see me no more? Come on up, up in the glory. You can meet me there.